Hi everyone, welcome to MindMagic Low Trainer Demo Session. So MindMagic is a leading global online training platform. We holding eight, eight plus years of experience in all IT achievements of MindMagic so far. We believe we delivering quality of training and have got more than IT courses in our library. More than 400 IT courses in our library. We successfully train more than 400 K students and professionals around the global. And also we have very good experience trainers and more than 10 years domain experts. Okay, about trainer profile and let me introduce myself. So this is Arun. I have 7 plus years experience in perform testing using JMeter and Low Runner. And also I have 3 plus years experience in online trainings and classroom trainings and corporate trainings. I am associate with MindMagic for past 3 and a half years. So we are going to see about Load Runner syllabus now. So first before enter into Load Runner topic, we are going to see about perform testing core concepts. Like what is perform testing and why perform testing is required to my application and perform testing types. Perform testing have different types like load test, stress test, spike test, endurance test and volume test. Based on the business need and application need, we are going to choose the type and we are going to perform the test. And also we are going to start with load runner installation. So for installation, we are going to provide the setup file. So I have I have in Google Drive, I am going to give access. You can directly download from my drive and you can install. So during planning session time itself, we are going to install the tool and we are going to see the load runner architecture and components. And also we are going to see basic C programming. So to script in load runner, we just need to have basic C knowledge like how to declare the variable, how to assign the value to that variable, how to declare load runner variable and how to convert load runner variable to C variable and C variable to load runner variable. So this basic C programming is for understanding the C data types and variables. And also we are going to see load runner functions. Some frequent functions we are going to see in C basic C along with load runner functions. Load runner have some inbuilt functions we are going to see about that functions. Then we will move to recording the script using virtual user generator. So load runner have three different component. One is virtual user generator, another one is controller and another one is analysis. By using that VUGEN, we can able to record and automate the scenario and we can able to customize the script. For recording, we have two different modes. One is HTML based recording mode and URL based recording mode. So we are going to see the difference between this HTML based recording and URL based recording. And also we are going to regenerate the script if required. We can able to regenerate and we can get back our original script again. So after recording, we are going to replay the script with different settings. So recording means so we have option to start record and we can navigate in the browser automatically that calls will capture in our load runner. So after recording load, load runner virtual user generator automatically generate the code. We no need to write any coding or scripting here. So automatically tool will generate the code. We just going to customize the code. Right. So after recording we going to alter the runtime settings. So runtime settings for change the script to behavior. So how how many times users need to log in and log out and how many times they need to repeat the action. So we are going to define some think time, facing time and run logic and log level information. We are going to change in this runtime settings. So this runtime settings we are going to see in the separate session. Then we will move to topic called parameterization. Parameterization is for user input. So what are value we given input to the application during recording time that we are going to parameterize. Let's say I'm going to launch and login redbus.com. I'm going to log in with my credential and I'm going to search with from city Chennai to Hyderabad. From city Chennai to Hyderabad. So it will give some bus list. From that list, I'm going to choose one bus. Like let's say KPN bus, I'm going to book the ticket and log out from the application. So this scenario we record and automate. But whenever I replay with multiple users, I want to pass different login ID and different search like from city and to city for each and every user. So that is how the real users will use the application, right? Let's say when 10 users going to use that application means they are going to log in with 10 different credentials and they will search with 10 different cities. So if I am going to search, I message Chennai to Bangalore. If you are going to search, you message Chennai to Hyderabad. So different user will search with a different keyword. And also server will give different list, bus list. So if I want to give different input to my request, then I need to parameterize that values. So I'm going to create one CSV file. From that file, I'm going to pass different input to my request. 
So that topic is called parameterization. Next, we're going to see correlation. Correlation is for handling the dynamic values. If any values that keep on changing and if it is generated by server during runtime, that value we need to identify and we need to correlate that. Let's say bus list. If I search with keyword Chennai to Bangalore, it will give one list. If I search with keyword Bangalore to Hyderabad, then it will give different list. So that list will keep on change, right? So if any value keep on changing, that we need to correlate. Right. So in load runner, we have two type of correlation. One is automatic correlation and manual correlation. We are going to see this both option. Next, we are going to see error handling. So error handling is for handling the errors. Let's say if any transaction fail during the execution time, what action need to take? We are going to define in error handling. So if any transaction fail in the middle, so automatically it is going to end the transaction and it will ask, allow that user to reinitiate with a new iteration or continue with the test. We are going to define an error handling. Next, till here we completed scripting like record the scenario, alter the runtime settings, parameterize the input, correlate the dynamic values and we handle the errors. Now our script is ready for execution. Now we will move to second component called controller. Controller is for design and execute a different type of test as per the test plan. Like load test or stress test or spike, endurance, volume, whatever we want. We are going to design and execute in controller. Controller is for multiple users test. So in controller only we are going to define how users need to ramp up and how long they need to run and how they need to ramp down. So we are going to design and execute in controller. So once execution completed, we will move to third component called analysis. During execution time, users will move to different state like end state, ready state, fail state, pass state, error state. Exit gradually exists. So user will move to different state. We're going to see the user state of that. And also we're going to execute that user with we're going to generate the load with load generator. We're going to see how to configure load generator in our test and how to generate different load from different LGs. LG is nothing but load generator. So with help of that, we can able to generate the required amount of load in our test. So once execution completed, we will move that result file to third component called analysis. With help of this component, we can able to analyze and generate the report. So in the analysis component, we can apply the filter condition and also we can drill down the graph and we can set the granularity to get particular detail about the test and result. We can able to extract particular data from the graph and we can able to generate the report. So here we are going to see how to generate the HTML report using this analysis component and finally we are going to see how to test web service and API perform test using load runner. So along with this web HTTP HTML protocol we are going to see how to test web service and web API testing using load runner. That's all about this course curriculum. Now we are going to see load runner introduction. So load runner is a perform testing tool which was pioneered by Mercury in 1999. So during that time it was under Mercury and Loadrunner was later acquired by HP in 2006. In 2016 Loadrunner was acquired by Microfocus. Now it is in with Microfocus vendor. So Loadrunner support various development tools, technologies and communication protocols. These are the components of Loadrunner. So this is overall Loadrunner component and architecture. So initially we are going to get business scenarios, application business scenario from application team. So these are these details we are going to gather during requirement gathering phase. Once we gather the scenario list, we are going to record and automate in VUGen called virtual user generator. So this VUGen is for scripting purpose. Here only we are going to record and automate each and every scenario. Once scripting is completed, we are going to upload the scripting controller. So in the controller, we are going to design and execute the test as per the test plan. So this controller required license so uh, trial version will come with 50 users license freely. If you want to generate more than 50 users load, then we need to purchase license. Right. So in controller, we are going to define load generator. So we are going to configure load generators in our test and we can able to generate required amount of load from LG machines. Let's say I am going to generate 1500 users load. From LG1, I am going to generate 500 users. From my machine, I am going to generate 500 users load. From LG2, I am going to generate 500 users. All together, I am going to generate 1500 users load. So that load will go and hit the server. Server going to process and respond back. 
that final results will get collate and save in my controller machine. So once test execution completed, we're going to get the result file. That result file we're going to upload in third component called analytics. It here we can able to analyze and generate the report. Right? So this is the overall component architecture, course technology in mark. Perform testing is essential for all kind of applications like web application, mobile application, desktop application and web service and APIs. And perform testing having wide openings also huge demand for perform testing profession. So most of the service based companies are using load runner. Why? Because they will purchase the license and they are going to use in a multiple project. But most of the product based companies are using JMeter. Why? Because it is open source. So if they want to cost cut, they want to do cost cut, then definitely they will choose JMeter for that. If they are ready to invest for license and all, then they will go for load runner. And also most secure applications like banking projects definitely they will ask you to test with license tool like load runner tool. Now we are going to see what is perform testing and why perform testing is required to my application. Perform testing is test an application and server behavior with expected virtual users load. So here we are going to test two things. One is application as well as server. Server including web server, app server and database server. With expected virtual users load. Virtual users means tool generated users. This user is going to do real user activity in the application. Right? So with help of virtual users, we are going to see the application and server performance aspects of system performance under the particular workload. So we are going to generate load with help of this tool and we are going to see how application and server respond for that load. Right? So we can able to measure speed, determine whether application able to respond quickly, scalability, determine maximum users load the software and application can handle. So how much load maximum we can able to handle in this system, we can able to scalable and stability, determine if application is suitable, stable and varying loads. So with help of this tool, we can able to determine whether our application is stable or varying the performance. Right, so we can able to determine that. Now we are going to see why perform testing. Why perform testing means when application is accessing by multiple users, definitely we need to make sure the application performance. Let's say we develop one application and we are going to launch that application in next week. When it go to production, only five members are going to use that application. If five members are going to use the application, means we can set up five different system. We can ask five testers to navigate in that application and we can get the feedback. But same application when it moved to production, 5000 customers going to use the application. Is it possible to set up 5000 system and get feedback from 5000 members? Not possible, right? So what we can do, we can take help of this load testing tool. So with help of tool, we can able to record and automate the real user behavior and we can able to generate the load. So with help of tool, we can able to generate the required amount of load. So this tool will generate the virtual users. This virtual users will do the real user activity. During that time, we can able to understand how application and server respond for that load. If it is able to handle, then it is recommend to move production. If it is not able to handle, then it will go for performance training. Perform testing types. Perform testing have different types like load test, trust test, spike test and inference on volume. Based on the business need and customer need, we're going to choose the type and we're going to perform the test. Some client will ask, I need to do load test in my application. Some client will say, I need to do stress test in my application. Some client will ask, I want endurance. Some client will say, I need to do all these types. Sometimes we will face client like they will say, no, I don't have idea about these types. We just review my application and suggest the type. Then we're going to educate them and let them choose that type. And we're going to perform the test. During this training time, we are going to use two different projects. One is DemoOpenCode.com. So that is like an e-commerce application which enable you to search and get the specific product details. And the another site we are going to use flight ticket booking. So allow you to search and book the ticket through online. Right. So these two projects we are going to use for our scripting and execution purpose. Lab setup. So load runner required Windows. So few components will support in Windows, few components will not support in Linux. But if, but all components will support in Windows, but few components will not support in Linux or Mac OS. 
so these are the system specification we need minimum 2 gb recommended 4 gb also and minimum 40 gb hard disk space we will need and it will support all flavors of windows so better to have windows machine for load runner also it will support in internet explorer all this version and also it will support in chrome and firefox additional course resources with, along with this course we are going to provide documents and useful reference and sample resume and resume preparation guidance so that's all about this course content thanks for watching the video